you can give them a name and outlet to make sure you get the right file. Okay. Uh, and then you're free to go. All right. So I'm Simon Button, syndicator for Sony. And the first question is, well, we're going to go through some of the special features, which are sure. quite brilliant, by the way. The first one is, you know, we learn about the app that you gave the cast. What was the thinking behind that? What was the inspiration for that? Well, I think when they read the script, I really wanted people to get a sense of them, what the movie would be like and to really think about the movie in a way that the screenplay and the music were like wedded together, that you couldn't think about the film without thinking about the song. So sometimes if you write a song into a script, you're sort of relying on people to either listen to a file you've sent them separately or just find the song online. But in this case, we actually built this script. It was like an app that a software designer in London made where like the script had a button next to it with like the baby driver symbol and you would press like the it was like the baby's face with the sunglasses and the earphones you press that and it start playing the song so most of the actors including Jamie Foxx and Kevin and John Hamm and um and Slow got read the script like that with the music playing Brilliant. and we see you on the first day with Ansel driving that car behind you you seem very relaxed how was it at the end of the shoot compared to that <laughs> I mean, at the end of the shoot, you're just like frazzled, like just because you're operating on little sleep and too much coffee and stuff. So I think actually, usually in the final couple of days, it's kind of re gets relaxed again. Because usually what happens towards the end, like the last big day is always like you're running around trying to get everything. And, you know, maybe on the last couple of days of the shoot, you're shooting like sort of a scene, but somebody around the corner is setting up this close up. It's like, oh, we've got to get this shot of this person pressing the button and stuff. So there's always lots of things going on. And then the last couple of days is usually kind of fun because then usually on my movies you end up doing inserts and you sort of start, the crew starts getting smaller and smaller and then the cars start going away and you literally end up doing, I think the last three days of the shoot we just shot close-ups of things. So like, you know, steering wheel shots, gear sticks, pedals, tachometers just like endlessly so th but that's actually sort of quite relaxed and fun and because there's you know you're not recording sound you can sometimes like play music whilst people are like doing shots of like <coughs> just endless 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 close-ups and it's quite brilliant how and also very brave how most of the car stuff is done for real the chases when you actually got down to it though did you think i don't know if i can do this i don't know if i can pull it off when it got to you know on the ground itself Usually the biggest worry whilst you're doing those car chase scenes is like, are we going to run out of time? Are we going to get kicked off the road? When you're shooting on a freeway and the Georgia police say you've got 6 a.m. until 2 p.m., they mean 2 p.m. hard. They don't mean oh, 2.15. They don't mean like 2.07. It's like, so usually whilst you're making, doing scenes like that, you're solely thinking about, are we going to get all these shots? Can we cram it all in? Have we got enough time? That's my main source of anxiety whilst I'm doing it because it's not so much can I pull it off, it's like do I have enough shots to make this work? So and sort of following on from that, we, we see the animatics which show how choreographed the whole thing was, but did it throw things up on the fly that you had to deal with there and then? Well, the location, the location sometimes change the animatics or you sort of have to kind of like think of another way around something like this is how we've drawn it, but actually this location offers something different. So maybe we, you know, like just change the sort of the action a little bit to fit the geography of where we are. Somebody, I mean, what's funny in that opening car chase, the route that he does is actually geographically correct. So if you went to Atlanta, you could walk the same route that he drives. You know, a lot of other films like cheat in terms of the location, like they sort of teleport across town. But for the most part in that first chase, it's pretty accurate where exactly he's going. It's kind of interesting to see just how many deleted scenes there are, given how precision tooled the end result is. How did you decide what to jettison? Well, usually it's like pacing. You know, you show it to an audience and, you know, there are some scenes which, I mean, some of the deleted scenes I really love, but you can sometimes feel when you're watching it that like, okay, this is a bit where we're spinning our wheels now, or maybe if we took this sequence out, this whole section would feel a lot tenser. So usually it's just about pace. I mean, none of the scenes that we took out are ones that I don't like, but I don't miss them in the movie because usually it's just about the overall pacing of it. And presumably, excuse me, 
<coughs> presumably the pop culture phenomenon and the fan art is not something you could have predicted, but how did that feel when the fans got on board with all this art and everything? I, I mean, it was amazing. I mean, you know, the, the, the fan art started after the trailer and uh, continued until today, like sort of like, I mean, I think sort of, some of it I think is that sort of like just the sort of the delineation of the characters and even their costumes. So people respond to the fact that you can actually identify all of the characters. Like sometimes in action films, you have goodies and baddies that are wearing black suits and goodies and baddies that are, wearing, that are driving black cars. And you, apart from who, what the actor's face is, you can't necessarily tell anybody apart. But we sort of spend a lot of time sort of delineating the characters, what they wear, what their makeup is, what their haircut is. And they think sort of people respond to that. They start to draw fan art because they come out of the movie with indelible images in their head and they start drawing them. So it's always amazing to me what people pick up on. And you've got cameos from musicians in the film that people, when they saw it the first time in cinemas, maybe wouldn't have noticed. Can you give us a couple of <coughs> examples who they should look out for? Well, some of them are pretty obvious. Like, obviously, Flea is heavily featured and so is Sky Ferrara playing Baby's Mom. And so is Paul Williams, who plays the butcher. And I guess the more blink and you'll miss it people are like Killer Mike and Big Boy, who are seen talking to Kevin Spacey in the restaurant when he's at the bar. Uh, you see them in a wide shot, and some people spot them and some people don't. And then the other person who's a bit more blink and you'll miss it is that John Spencer of the John Spencer Blues Explosion, who sings the opening track. He appears towards the end um, as a prison guard. So it actually has a line on camera. So I thought that was a funny thing of like bookending the film with him. He's the first voice you hear and the last. And Lily James says on one of the uh, featurettes that you've got impeccable taste in music. But what are your guilty pleasures? What maybe you don't want people to know that you like? Well, here's the thing is I, I feel like most things that are guilty pleasures, I feel that that's changed because most things that were like guilty pleasures when I was growing up are now considered the height of cool. For example, ELO was not a cool band when I was growing up. So if you go to LA, people are like, ah, oh, ELO is like the height of hip <laughs> hipness. <laughs> like, so I think things like ABBA and ELO are not guilty pleasures anymore. And like, I like disco music, which some people consider a guilty pleasure, but you know, it's good stuff. <laughs> Can I do one final quick yeah. question? Yeah. Um, a lot of the, the actors in the film are actually musicians as well. Was that partly why you cast them? Um, it wasn't the only reason to cast them, I cast them so right for the part, but the fact that, you know, that they had musical chops was, uh, you know, a real sort of great, um, greatly beneficial thing. So like Ansel, Jamie Foxx, Kevin Spacey, even Lily James, Aza Gonzalez, pretty much everybody except John Hamm, who to my knowledge does not have a recording career. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, man. Cheers. Did you Thank talk, you. Did you talk to Paul Williams about Phantom of the Paradise? Or?